We'll now consider what happens when we take the Laplace transform of the derivative of f of t. So given that um, the Laplace transform of f of t is equal to f of s, what happens when we take the Laplace transform of the derivative of f of t with respect to t? Let me go ahead and tell you the end from right at the beginning so that as we're doing this, um, as we are developing this formula, you can see it developing. So we're going to see that the Laplace transform of the derivative of f of t is equal to s times the Laplace transform of f minus the initial value of f. Okay, let's go ahead and, uh, and derive this. By definition, the Laplace transform is the integral from 0 minus to infinity. We're taking the Laplace transform of df of t dt. This is the function of time that we're going to transform. Multiplied by e to the minus st dt. So we have two functions of t, the derivative of the function, which is a function in and of itself, and then this e to the minus st. And we want to integrate the product of those two. You recall from your calculus class that when you have two different functions of time, one way of going about integrating them is to use parts. And parts works when you can differentiate one of the functions and it becomes easier or simpler. And at the very least, when you integrate the other function, it doesn't become more complicated. So here's the formula for integration by parts. It's the integral of u dv is equal to the product of u and v evaluated at the limits of the integration minus the integral of v du. And of course, those have the same limits of integration. So in this, let's let u equal e to the minus st. And then du will equal negative s e to the minus st. And we'll let dv be the function derivative f of t dt. And when you integrate that, then we get v then is simply equal to f of t. Now, let's plug in the u's and v's and du's and dv's into the integration by parts formula. And when we do that, we get u, which is e to the minus st, times v, which is f of t. Let's make that obvious that that's f of t. So this, is, this right here is our u term and that right there is our v term. This has to be evaluated at the limits 0 minus to infinity minus the integral from 0 minus to infinity of v, which is f of t, times du, which is, let's put that in square brackets to begin with, minus s e to the minus s t, and then we have the dt there. Looking at this first term and evaluating it at the, in, at the uh, limits, we first of all, at the upper limit, we have e to the minus st, well, t equaling or going to infinity, e to the minus infinity is 0. And as long as f of t is constrained, which means it's not growing and not, you know, that it doesn't diverge, go towards infinity itself as t goes to infinity, as long as f of t is constrained, then we'll have 0 times some non-infinite number. The, this term evaluated at infinity is going to be 0. Now, these terms evaluated at the lower limit is going to be minus e to the minus 0. Well, that's 1 times f evaluated at 0 minus. That's going to be just 1 times f of 0 minus. And then over here, we have minus this integral, integral. Now this s, or minus s, is not a function of time. In fact, as far as this integration is concerned, this minus s can be brought out as a constant. So a minus times a minus is plus s times the integral from 0 to infinity f of t e to the minus st dt. And of course, we recognize that right there as the definition of 
the Laplace transform of f, or that is f of s. We have then the s times f of s, and we have this minus f at 0 minus. And that then is the Laplace transform of the derivative of the function with respect to t. So if we have some function f of t, and we're wanting to take the Laplace transform not of f of t, but of the derivative of f of t, and if we know f of s, the Laplace transform of f of t, we can write directly the transform of the derivative. It's simply equal to s times the Laplace transform of the original function minus the initial value of the original time domain function. Notice that in the time domain, we had a function being operated on by the differentiation operator. We had a derivative of a function here. In the Laplace domain, we don't have a derivative. We have simply the Laplace transform of the original function multiplied by s. So in general, we say that when transforming a derivative in the Laplace domain, we, we substitute that derivative, or the advantage that we have is that we replace the derivative with a multiplying factor of s. We can use this, the result that we just derived to determine the effect of the Laplace transform on, hi on higher ordered derivatives. So let's just rewrite that. The Laplace transform of the derivative of f of t with respect to t we found to be equal to s times f of s minus f at 0 minus. We now want to see what happens if we have like the second derivative of a function or the third or, or so on. So let's let this uh, definition take place. Let's define g of t to be equal to the derivative of f of t with respect to t. And using this formula right here, then we can say that the Laplace transform of g of t, which would be g of s then, is equal to s f of s minus f at 0 minus. See what we're doing? We're simply giving a simple ver uh, function name to this function, which is the derivative of the function of f of t. Alrighty, now let's take the derivative of g of t, or of the der let's take the Laplace transform of the derivative of g of t with respect to time. In other words, g of t is defined as the first derivative of f. So the derivative of g of t would effectively be the second derivative of f. And what we're looking for is what is the effect in the Laplace transform, or of the Laplace transform, on then the second derivative. Well, using our definition, the derivative, or the Laplace transform of the derivative of a function is just s times g of s minus g of 0 minus. But we've already determined that g of s is just s f of s minus f at 0 naught, so replacing this in here for this, we have then that this is equal to s times s f of s minus f at 0 minus. And we can go ahead and flesh that on out then. That's equal to s squared f of s minus Oh, you know what? I dropped a I dropped a term here. I dropped this minus g of zero minus. Well, coming back up here to g being the derivative of f, we need to then subtract off the derivative of f evaluated at zero minus. Now, this is complete here now. So what we did just to cover up my uh, my goofing up here, we've got s g of s. So g of s was this s times g of s minus g of 0 minus. Well, g of 0 minus is just g evaluated at 0 minus, but g is the derivative of f. So this term here is just the initial value of the first derivative. This then becomes the Laplace transform of the derivative of g, or the derivative of the, uh, the second derivative of s. Now let's go ahead and expand this. This then becomes s squared f of s 
minus s f of 0 minus minus the first derivative of f evaluated at 0 minus with respect to t. So the Laplace transform of the first derivative of f is s f of s minus f at 0 minus. The Laplace transform of the second derivative of f is equal to s squared times f of s minus s times the initial value minus the initial value of the derivative. We can continue on in this way and do this same type of process over and over. And if we did it and didn't make any mistakes, we would then come up with the, the uh, formula for the Laplace transform of the nth derivative of f. So the nth derivative of f of t with respect to t is equal to s to the nth power times f of s minus s to the n minus 1 times the initial condition of the function minus s n to the minus 2 times the first derivative d f at 0 minus with respect to t and so on and so on until you get down to the n minus first derivative d n minus first derivative of f evaluated at 0 minus I don't need that parentheses there but I'll just close it up to at least balance my parentheses dt to the n minus 1. That then becomes the formula for the Laplace transform of the nth derivative. Notice that the powers of s descend starting at n and descending on down. And the final term will be the n minus first derivative of f evaluated at 0 minus, or the initial condition of that derivative.